I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, good people. Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela of the African People Socialist Party, the Uhuru Movement, a uh, longtime activist and struggler, is, uh, 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 I believe, still chairman of the Black is Back Coalition, still That's chair right. of the Black is Back, right on. So good to see you again. Welcome uh, back to the platform. It's been a minute, but it's, uh, uh, once upon a time you have been here. It's good to see you again. What is the latest? What is What have you done again, <laughs> brother? Yes, you tell her. What have you done again to get yourselves, uh, unfortunately, targeted once more by the state uh, uh, with the claim that you have been acting as a Russian asset or pawn of some kind? But but please catch us up and let us know what's been going on. Uh, and again, welcome. Well, thank you so much, Comrade John. The first thing I want to say is that I really appreciate being able to have this discussion with you. And while I did not hear... Uh, uh, the discussion that you've just had, I, I do appreciate the tail end that you were talking about uh, the media within the colony and how uh, it is absolutely necessary for the colonizer, for the oppressed uh, to be able to control the narrative that explains uh, the relationship that the colonized has with the colonizer. And that's what's happening. The United States government, um, five o'clock in the morning, uh, Friday, attacked my house in St. Louis. Um, they came to the house, blocked the streets with an armored vehicle in front of my house, uh, yelled on loudspeakers uh, that people who were in the house had come out with our hands up uh, and, and started ex exploding flash bang, bang grenades all over the place, going over and over and over again. Uh, so we didn't know what was happening. And they said, this is the FBI, FBI, come out with your hands up, with nothing in your hands and what have you. So I, I, I felt like uh, there's a good possibility that they were gonna kill the people in the house, and, you know, well, me. And uh, so I, I, my wife and I were sitting up because you know we're up early in the morning. Uh, they came and got Fred, if you remember, at four o'clock in the morning in 1969. So uh, they came a little later. Uh, at five o'clock here. And so they attacked um, the house. I came out of the house uh, first because if they, if they were going to shoot or anything like that, I didn't want my wife to be in the initial uh, line of fire and uh, asked her to start calling uh, people uh, to let them know what was going on. Uh, I was to learn later that every effort she made to call someone uh, failed because the government had jammed our, our phones and not just the phones in this house, but contacts that we had around uh, around the country. So we couldn't communicate with anybody. I, I went out of the house. Uh, it's still dark at five o'clock in the morning. And I see the armored vehicle and uh, we're surrounded by thugs in, in uh, tactical gear. Uh, and when I walk out the door, uh, bouncing off my chest, uh, 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 were these uh, uh, laser targeting uh, dots all over my chest. So, uh, so yeah, I'm assuming that they're going to kill now. <clears throat> I, I get downstairs, hands up, come this direction. My wife, then she follows me down the stairs and she would say later that when she was on the way downstairs, a drone passed her, almost hit her in the face going up the stairs into the house. So um, when, when I get downstairs, uh, come this way, come this way, bright lights in my face and what have you. And I see these uh, camouflaged, uh, uh, tired uh, thugs with, uh, with uh, armored vest on, and uh, and the and the flashbang grenades are still going off uh, all around the place, and you know, uh, you know, the neighbor and the neighbors, of course, are being awakened, and uh, and I imagine being terrorized uh, by what has happened. The the FBI they've occupied the porch on the next to the on the, the house next to me. They put tape over the um, the video camera you know, the, that that people can look down when somebody rings the bell, they put tape over it so nobody can see what they're doing. They won't mean us. I get down, what's going on? They use the zip 
ties, they handcuff, um, they cuff me in the back. My wife comes down, they put cuffs on her. They put actual handcuffs on her. And uh, we're standing there and they're telling us to sit on the curb, uh, uh, you know, which I refuse to do. And uh, what is this about? What is this about? Did we have a search warrant uh, for your house? Uh, let me see it. Where is the search warrant? Uh, they won't show me a search warrant. They say it's somewhere it's coming or someone over there has it, something to that effect. And uh, I'm still saying, what is this about? What is this about? Well, you know, we'll talk to you. Uh, uh, we, uh, and then finally they said that uh, there's an indictment coming down uh, on a Russian national who's in Russia. An indictment coming down later this morning. Uh, and... Uh, and if he ever come, he comes to the United States, he's going to be arrested or something to that effect. So, you know, we're not knowing what the hell is going on other than we're standing there with these armed white men. Uh, and who uh, there was one African who was there. And obviously he was there very reluctantly. I mean, it was very obvious to me looking at this guy that this was someplace that he did not want to be. <clears throat> you said something about Beyonce being able to quit. I'll get out of that, you know. Well, I, that's what I was thinking. Well, you don't have to be here doing this, you know. So, so that's what happened. And uh, uh, finally, they asked me if I knew this person. There's a guy. Uh, his name is Alexander Ionov, and I do know Alexander Ionov. I've met him in the past. I've gone to conferences uh, that were sponsored by a group that he leads called the anti-globalization uh, movement of uh, Russia, I think something like that. And, and, uh, and they've, they've sponsored international conferences uh, on self-determination. That's involved, that's included people from Spain, uh, from Ireland, from all around the world. Uh, I've met Ukrainians there in, in this, uh, this meeting. And it's also included uh, the this, this second time I was there, some weird, white people who are talking about succeeding at California, succeeding, you know, they're going to. Yeah, succeed. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think somebody may succeed in Texas. And I'm, I'm telling them, you know, uh, that ain't, we ain't touching this with a 10 foot pole that if, if there were Mexicans who were talking about succeeding, we'd be right down with that because this is occupied Mexico and these white guys, just another group of colonizers competing with the main colonizer for control of, of territory that is Mexican territory stolen from the Mexican people. Anyway, that that happens. And so that was that relationship. And through the anti-globalization movement, uh, they we did a, a tour, and I don't remember the exact year, a six uh, city tour uh, that was also connected with uh, the United Nations uh, doing some kind of investigation in the United States about the condition of black people. And we followed them uh, in various places trying to involve ourselves, charge the United States with genocide. We put, uh, in fact, um, a petition uh, on whatever that website is that people can sign in, in uh, petitions. And up to now, it's got, uh, you know, 100 and some odd thousand people, Africans from around the world and in the United States who are signing in and making all kinds of extraordinary comments because they know what happens to African people here. So, uh, and then I'm to learn that we have a solidarity movement that you may be familiar with, uh, Comrade Jared, the African People Solidarity Committee. I organized uh, the African People Solidarity Committee uh, in 1976, uh, and that happened in St. Petersburg, Florida. And right now, they function in 130 uh, 37 uh, cities and about 30 states uh, in the United States doing reparations work. That's all they do. That's the that's not all. That's the primary work. They do reparations work, uh, and they also, uh, uh, that work includes uh, putting out in the white community, as we characterize behind enemy lines, uh, the conditions of black people in this country that white people ought to be supporting. <clears throat> That's what they do. So they, they open up, or we open up an office uh, in South St. Louis, uh, which is where the major most of the white people live as opposed to North St. Louis, where we are located, um, uh, the international headquarters of our office is located. So at the same time they're hitting us, they go to the Solidarity Center. They use battering rams uh, to knock the doors down. They also uh, use the flashbang grenades. Uh, and there was an apartment uh, 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 
upstairs in that building. They uh, banged the doors in there. Uh, a man and woman who are uh, part of our movement were in bed. They dragged them out. They put them at handcuffs on the gun, on, at gunpoint, uh, handcuffed them. They went to the home of uh, the uh, leader of the Solidarity Movement under my leadership. They banged, knocked the doors in, uh, destroyed the doors, uh, 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 put them on the gunpoint, had them sitting there. And uh, then they went to the Hooter House in St. Petersburg, Florida, knocked the doors in, they were off, <laughs> off the hinges, <clears throat> went in, uh, and uh, they stole something like 40 years of archives uh, in that building, 40 years of archives uh, con of, our, of our struggle of Black people, the struggle of our party and movement, etc. They stole my cell phone. They stole uh, my wife's cell phone, her, her computer. They stole my iPad. They stole her iPad. They stole <laughs> equipment and materials from all the people that I'm just mentioning and all the sentence that I just mentioned. <clears throat> we spent thousands of dollars since that time just to be able to have this discussion with you that I'm having now to replace the computers, replace the phones and things like that. Uh, uh, so effectively, that's what's happened now. I never saw a search warrant until hours mm. later that uh, I felt secure enough to go back to the house after they had left. They had knocked the doors down uh, of one house. They had broken the windows uh, in the house, they had broken uh, the windows in the basement. <coughs> All of that stuff got to be repaired. Thousands of dollars have to go into repairing this. So I'm to here. Uh, by the way, uh, you may have heard. Uh, that either that day or the next day, Biden comes out with some kind of announcement that uh, he has uh, placed sanctions on Ironhawk uh, as a part of their efforts, because of their efforts to uh, affect elections in the United States, these wonderful elections, democ democratic elections in the United States. And, uh, and then that they had made some arrests uh, of people in the United States. <coughs> Excuse me. If you need to, yeah, if you got some water, yeah, yeah, take it. Yeah. But I'm sure while you get your, while you get your, but, but I'm sure because, because <laughs> when, when they give you all your stuff back and produce all of the mountains of evidence showing a legitimacy for their raid, all will be made clear, right? I mean, because, because clearly they must have videotape and sound recordings and pictures of you collaborating to overthrow this and do this than that and whatever the hell else, you know, there, I mean, what is it? In fact, one of the questions I do have for you is to, to maybe give an overview of what is the African People's Socialist Party, the Uhuru Movement, the Black is Back Coalition. What is it that you all actually are versus what is being characterized of your work now to justify this kind of abuse? Well, one thing I'm going to tell you is they are going to be able to produce, they're going to be able to produce uh, uh, an interview, a, web, a webinar that we did with Alexander Ayunov, um maybe in, in sometimes April, maybe April, May, something like that, uh, uh, under the title, Ain't No Russian Ever Called Me Nigger. Uh, <laughs> because uh, we came out in opposition uh, to the U.S. initiated war against Russia that's been going on uh, as quietly as it's kept for more than 100 years. When the United States and all of the colonial powers invaded Russia after the 1917 Russian Revolution, 1918, they invaded Russia, including Japan, the United States, and all the colonial powers existing invaded Russia. And they've been pushing Russia since that time. They created uh, NATO in 1949 for the exact purpose of containing and destroying Russia. And so when I see NATO uh, on the border of Ukraine, after they did Afghanistan to get closer to Russia, uh, after they did Afghanistan to overthrow a Russian supported government there that had brought the rights to women that they claim that they are so uh, protective of, after they did that, uh, all of those things, it's, it's really clear that the United States is on a mission. But the African People's Socialist Party was born out of the civil rights and black uh, and, and and black power movement of uh, of the 1960s. I organized the African People's Socialist Party in 1972. I'm a former. I was former member of SNCC. 
SNCC is the organization that projected the whole uh, Black Power uh, slogan demand uh, in 1966. Uh, and uh, so, <clears throat> so it's off of that. And then 1972, they've killed Malcolm by now. They've killed King, not the Russians. They've killed Martin Luther King, not the Russians. Uh, who did hound it. They've killed Lumumba, not the Russians. In fact, America, France, uh, Belgium killed uh, Lumumba and then cut him up in little pieces and then put him in vats of, of acid. Not the Russians. Uh, they've overthrown Nkrumah. Not the Russians. America has done this. And and so we, and they have uh, uh, assassinated after wounding and capturing Che Guevara in 1967 on my birthday, uh, they've done all this. They've actually militarily defeated the Black Revolution of the 1960s. We were founded in 1972. They've killed Fred Hampton. I found this we, they have killed, uh, we have founded the African People's Social Party in 1972 with the stated uh, determination to complete the Black Revolution of the 60s. There was nothing mealy mouthed about it. There was no pretext that we were some kind of American group that was fighting for some presumed democracy in America, we understood clearly that America was the enemy of black people and the strategic enemy of, of the masses of people around the world. So a party was created and we've been with the, uh, the 50th anniversary of the African People's Socialist Party was May of, uh, of this year. The organization is 50 years old. We exist in various countries around the world and various cities uh, in this country. And, uh, and our objective is the liberation of Africa and black people globally, the unification of Africa, the unification of black people, the liberation global. That's what we're about. Uh, Justice Garvey was about and who experienced the wrath of the United States government frame up the FBI. Actually the FBI uh, had to integrate it itself because they needed somebody black uh, to infiltrate the Garvey movement. And so, you know, uh, uh, FBI does all of this stuff. And so now, uh, now we are so stupid that we could not identify our own contradictions as a people uh, 50 years after our founding uh, that the Russians have to be telling us what to do. And the Russians have to tell us that Mike Brown lay in the, in the, on the streets on a hundred degree plus whether after being killed by an American soldier that they call the police in, in, in Huntsville, uh, uh, the Russians had to tell us that there was the U.S. military that had armed thugs that they call the police uh, who came out uh, to try to kill black people who rose up on Canfield Drive. The Russians had to tell us that. So some, this, this is the logic of what they're pushing forward. But nobody, nobody has bought into that. Or most people haven't bought into that anyway. So that's, that's uh, something about us. And so we exist. We exist. Uh, they kill uh, uh, So Bukwe. Uh, they they kill uh, uh, comrades there in South Africa. Uh, in fact, uh, you named uh, I I what is it? I print what is it? I uh, uh, Steve Biko. What was the thing that I, this? I write what I like. I and write. I do I mix what I that we we yeah. borrow that from him. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Uh, homage and, and so to they, him. Yeah, they kill Biko, and so but Biko is not dead. Malcolm is not dead because the African people sources was on the ground in South Africa, where they kill uh, uh, Biko, where they kill Sobukwe, and what have it, carrying out the same policies and politics, and the, and the Secretary General of the African Socialist International, that's a part of the international re reflection of the whole party, uh, is an African born in Congo. He's from Congo. So they, the Mumba, they haven't, they haven't succeeded in doing any of this, and that's a problem they got. And the other problem, I just want to say this, Comrade Jared, is that right now the, the so-called West, America, is suffering a serious kind of crisis, it's clear. And uh, nothing has worked for them. And uh, they need an explanation uh, for what's happening in the world. They couldn't get a single sycophant, neo-colonial power, a country uh, on the continent of Africa to support their position on Russia and the United Nations. Black people didn't support it. Most of the other peoples around the world didn't support them the way they were, even in Indonesia and what have you. And black people in this country, generally speaking, don't don't buy that. So they're now concocting this thing to explain how they are so much better than Russia. This is part of the contest they had when the Soviet Union was existing, that they had to show that their way was the best way. Uh, uh, and even though you may be familiar with this comment, Jared, in 2020, at the uh, Munich Security Council that meets every year uh, to talk about the, the situation in the world with hundreds of government officials from around the world. And uh, Zuckerberg was there. 
the, 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 the big contest, the big question, speaking of media and colonial colonizer, the big issue that in 2020 that they were grappling with is, uh, uh, what, how do they characterize it? Uh, 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 westlessness, the movement to westlessness. And that, that is the insignificance of the quote West that's based on colonialism. They like to pretend that the murderer in Buffalo, New York, who was influenced and informed by you will not replace us. And these mobs of white people who march in our streets, you will not replace us like that. That's something that's specific and peculiar uh, to this irrational white people when they have in this meeting with hundreds of people, including Zuckerberg, et cetera, discussing the possibility, probability of westlessness. That is to say the removal of the replacement of the white man in terms of the domination of the peoples around the world. So that's their problem. That's not my problem. And so they want to meet with me. And uh, I had an interview, I call it that, uh, yesterday with CNN. And it's clear, you know, that they are representing uh, the colonial powers. And, and you know, that's, that's, there's no doubt about that. And they're asking me about some charges of, uh, of uh, us being a agents of Russia to affect American elections. And, you know, I said, there's no way we can even take that question seriously. Because if, in fact, uh, uh, that you were serious, uh, what you would be doing is saying that despite the fact that thousands of white people attacked the U.S. Capitol uh, in, on January 6th uh, because of the outcome of the election, despite the fact that there are four, more than 400 pieces of legislation in states throughout the United States that are limiting the rights of black people to vote, uh, uh, that there has not been a single flash bomb uh, uh, grenade uh, attack by FBI agents on Trump Tower or any of these other white people who were involved in that. So you want to have me engage in a discussion <laughs> that's typical to the, the slander, like when did you stop beating your wife? And to even engage in the discussion is to validate, is to give validity to the question. So you want to talk to me about Russia? Russia ain't my problem. Uh, well, do you think that Russia did this? Russia may be trying to do such and such a thing. I say, I, I don't know what Russia is doing. Uh, you know, I know Russia has the beef with the United States, but my beef is with the United States. I ain't got nothing to do with Russia. I'm not in some kind of love affair with Russia. My struggle has always been about the liberation of black people and that's what i'm about that's what the Uhuru movement is about that's what the african people's socialist party is about so we'll see what they do i think they said this is supposed to air on today but i'm uh, you know but i have i've been to moscow twice but i've also been to belfast during the era of the troubles when the british uh were nakedly engaged in colonization there i've been to south africa i've been to Vain uh, to nicaragua uh, uh i met daniel ortega I met uh, uh, Nyoma, who was the father of so-called African nation of, of Africa of Namibia, and who led the uh, you know Swapo organization. So you know, I, I, you know, thousands of white people leave this country every day, going to occupied Palestine that they call Israel, and you don't hear a single word uh, being made about them, where they're killing Palestinians and keeping their land. So. You know, it's a bogus thing, and I, I refuse to talk to you about my relationship with Russia. I, I will talk to you about the fact that even in North St. Louis, where you had to drive in uh, the streets here, and you've seen it looks like a bombed out uh, situation where African people are catching hell, and you can see all the work that we've done. We, we, the African People's Socialist Party has begun a process of revitalizing and transforming North St. Louis. That's what you ought to talk about, and that's why they're attacking us because of this and because of the way that uh, the U.S. and all of the stuff that it's doing is being exposed uh, to the world and inside this country as well. I think also it has to be pointed out that part of this uh, attack on your organization uh, is, is a broad attack on black left radical politics uh, yes. so that, that the, 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 the <laughs> falsely positioned punditry that claims to represent black people can can get away with what it's doing. Uh, and whatever may be yours or anyone else's individual shortcomings, that is not why the state is crashing through your door. I mean, it's the same, you know, the, it, it, you know, the same, uh, um, anyway. So, 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 uh, but, but I'm saying, but I'm, I'm still interested in the way that they want to frame your, meeting with somebody 
your communication with somebody or some groups as evidence that you've done something illegal or that you've had the kind of impact on American elections that uh, they claim. I mean, I think it's 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 anyway, it's fascinating. Listen, is there anything else? I know we only have a few minutes left. I don't I don't you know, so I want to let make sure anything else you want to leave us with is made clear. Um, uh, so please, if there's if there's anything left for, that you want to lay out or uh, uh, alert us to uh, or have us uh, encourage in terms of behavior uh, or support, uh, you know, what 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 is it that you what is it that can be done and what, what is it you would like us to know? Well, first of all, what can be done is what you're doing right now in terms of challenging their monopoly uh, of uh, this narrative. And people need to know exactly what happened and uh, be able to have a better explanation from what the government is doing. It, it characterizes everybody who's ever been effective in defining what is happening to our people, not only here, but around the world uh, as terrorists, enemies of the people, they, ter- they characterize every And I think what really must be understood is the fact that we have taken this revolution internationally, uh, Mm -hmm. that we have connected Africans around the world, and that we have, yes, uh, uh, worked with uh, people, others around the world uh, to become a clear uh, uh, operational part of the struggles of oppressed people everywhere, trying to consolidate that unity and solidarity also with the freedom of Africa and African people. So I think they need to do what you are doing now, put the word out, tell the story. Uh, They need to share this that we are talking about now, if they have a capacity to do that, they need to go to African APSP, Uhuru, APSP, U-H-U-R-U dot org, Uh, go uh, to there. They need to make public statements of support of the party and the Uhuru movement. Uh, Various organizations are doing that right now all around uh, the country expressing support and solidarity. I think that's what's going to be important, that they do not control this narrative, that they're not speaking in some kind of silo that we cannot break through. Uh, I think that's what needs to happen. And uh, so that would be helpful. And uh, also the Black is Black Coalition, you were a founding member of the coalition, John. You are the one who, uh, in a matter of five minutes or so, created the first PSA that was done for the Black is Back Coalition. And I think they should be aware also that the Black is Back Coalition is having its uh, 13th annual conference uh, on the 6th and 7th of August uh, in St. Louis, and they should go to blackisbackcoalition.org uh, and register to come to St. Louis if you can. Come to St. Louis so you can see what frightens them so much about the kind of development that's happened there blackisbackcoalition.org, register for the conference. And if you can't come, then participate uh, via social media, uh, et cetera. So that's what we will call on people to do. I do. I just want to highlight once again, very quickly, that uh, this 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 point that in a moment where there is this reactionary response being promoted within the African world against Pan-Africanism, that the pan-Africanism and internationalism that you all represent is getting this response from the state and the reverse backwards hashtag movements are getting platformed, funded, welcomed, written up glowingly, uh, et cetera, and so forth. So I just, just want to, just want to highlight that distinction in terms of how different politics and groupings are treated. uh, And that should say a lot. If, if and not, Gerald, if on the way out of here, I also sure. think that uh, the people who I think I'm talking to now, and I think people who uh, are in the world, I think this whole notion that we're getting funds from the Russians uh, is crazy, and that what would besmirch our reputation is if we were getting money from the U.S. government and from the FBI. That's the problem, you see, and I think that's their problem, too. Uh, that they can't buy us. They've never been able to buy us. And a whole bunch of white people throughout this country are paying reparations to us that's being reflected in this this development that we're doing in St. Louis and various other places. The Russians don't owe us reparations. There's no African that I know with a Russian last name. 
The last names I'm familiar with come from the co white colonizers from England, from all these other kinds of. Hey, places. in fact, we used to joke all the time. <laughs> show me the show me a white Jefferson, exactly. uh, Washington, exactly. Jackson. You can't even find white folks yeah, with those yeah. names anymore. It's been so <laughs> imp imposed on enslaved <laughs> African people. This is ridiculous. Yes, yes, anyway, yes. yeah. Chairman O'Malley, I should tell it's always good to hear from you. Appreciate you coming through. Uh, we definitely express solidarity from this platform and we'll we'll keep in touch and uh, uh, look to be as supportive as possible going forward. Uh, you know, uh, power to you and your crew and, and uh, um, respect to you and your family for having suffered that that invasion. And I hope all is relatively well, uh, relatively soon. Uhuru, thank you so much, brother. And, all right. Yeah. Uhuru. All right. Right on. Thank you.